Okay guys, step one is applying for or renewing my passport. Um, so Google is where I'm going to start and uh, the first thing you're going to notice on this page is ads that pop up. That's very common. Scroll right on by. Um, what you want to see is the official travel.state.gov website. Okay, so as you can see I've been to this link a few times, but um, for this video I want to show you exactly where I go. Uh, renew my US passport because I currently hold a passport. It is expired, so I should be able to renew it. However, um, the first thing you're going to look at is five, five different statements that you must answer yes to all of them. If you answer no to any of them, you have to go in person um, and there's going to be maybe a different form that you're going to have to fill out. Okay, so for the first one, you see, uh, do you have the passport in your possession? Yes, I do. Um, do you, is it damaged? No, it is not. Okay, were you 16 or older when it was issued? Yes, it was. Barely, but I was 16. Um, number four, was it issued within the last 15 years? And the answer is no. So in that case, I'm going to um, have to apply in person, which is fine with me. Um, number five is, uh, has your name changed? Okay, basically. And so I answered yes to four of the five, but I'm still required to answer five of the five or yes to all five questions if I want to go and um, if I want to mail in the passport. So in this case, I have to apply in person. And so you're going to um, hit this link here, apply in person page. And it's going to, again, tell you that to imply, when you apply in person, you have to use form DS-11 if at least one of the following is true. Okay, it's the same five questions or statements that you looked at on the previous page. In this case, it was issued more than 15 years ago. So hit form DS-11, it will bring you there. Okay, um, what I did is save this actual document to my computer. Okay, so by hitting this little print icon on the top right hand corner, saving it as PDF because I want to have a PDF copy on my computer. Um, I'm going to select the uh, folder I want to save it in, give it a name that I know I'm going to remember, and then hit save. Okay, because I've done this, the file already exists, so I'm just going to replace it. It's not a big deal. Um, to fill it out, there is a fillable option on the website. I did notice that earlier, but I like to use pdfescape.com. Okay, it's a free PDF filler. Hit the use free option top right hand corner and then upload PDF to PDF Escape. Okay, so upload, you're going to have to choose which file you want to work on. This is the one that is blank. You're going to hit open. Okay, now it's going to populate the document. You're going to have different things that you can do to this document. You can write on it, you can white out, you can erase, you can freehand it, you can highlight it. So um, I'm going to show you for sure how to use the text feature because that's what needs to happen here. But it's super user friendly. You just choose whatever one you think you need. When you're signing a document, you can use freehand and you're literally going to draw, say, your signature. OK, but in this case, it's going to be text. Um, the first four pages is a lot of information. OK, so if you have children or um, if you had a previous passport, passport card or book, there's some information for you. There's a warning that says if it's false information you're supplying, you're going to get in trouble. OK, so be honest. Uh, citizenship, proof of identity, color photo fees are all things that are required to uh, submit the application. And so you can read more details here, especially if you have a unique situation. OK, um, there's some other things about mailing it in and federal tax laws that may be uh, relevant, fee remittance, all this good stuff. OK, electronic passport, if you're interested in that. There's some privacy issues here, paper reduction, and then the actual application. OK, so hit the text top left hand corner. So the text option and then you're going to have to select either the passport book card or both. 
Okay, so put your cursor in the box, hit the capital X, and that's going to put the X next to whichever selection you're going with. I'm going with the book because right below it, it says the card is not valid for international air. So if you plan on traveling by air internationally, you cannot have a card. You must have a book. You can get both, but I'm going with book. Okay, there's a regular and there's a large option. I'm going with regular because although I'd love to say that I travel regularly overseas, I really honestly don't. So regular book is fine. Okay, now if you're going to fly frequently overseas, then maybe you should get the large book. Okay, so here, what I want you to notice, I'm not going to be putting my information because I know there are wonderful people in this world, but there are some um, scam artists, and I don't want them to be able to take that information and basically steal my identity. So, you can type straight through if you need to, if it's an open box, but here you have individual characters that you need to enter okay so hit the space bar that way your letters can be at the same level and you're not having to click each individual one and trying to keep the letters level okay so imagine if you put your cursor up here then down here it becomes annoying okay you can erase them but I don't like to spend time on the aesthetics of things I want it to be functional so use the space bar okay so first, middle, last, something to remember, whatever name is on your passport must match your airport airline tickets. So if you include your middle name, include your middle name on the airline tickets. Okay, date of birth, date of birth, you're going to fill in if you identify as male or female, put an X. Place of birth should be found on your birth certificate. Okay, um, you don't need to put country if it's outside of the US, but city and state is fine. Social, you're definitely not getting that. Your email address where you want to be notified, that does not bother me if you know it, because if you're emailing me, maybe you're a client, and that's a good thing, okay? Phone number, you're gonna fill in as well. Of course, you're not just typing it straight across. You're gonna put one digit per box, okay? Mailing address. Um, I recommend if you have a P.O. box to include your physical address as well. Where we live, we only get mail at the post office. There is no carrier service out here. So um, I always put our physical address and then our P.O. box in the um, second line of the address um, section. Okay, so let's say we live in New York City and New York City is in New York State zip code you don't have to put in the country if you're within the United States okay now if you have other names you've used so if you've been married divorced if you legally change your name for whatever reason make sure to include that uh, here if you've had four or five different last names make sure to include that on additional pages they need to know all your last names second section of this page it's not for you to do it's going to be for the agent not a big deal um, then the next page is more information about you. So first, oh, I'm sorry, last, first, middle, okay? Birthday, your parents' information, be careful here. When you fill out your mother's, it's going to ask for parent, um, at parent's birth. So the first time I did it, I actually put her married name when I should be putting her maiden name. Um, so you want to make sure that you put father, and again, one letter per box last name okay date of birth place of birth I don't know if it's on your birth certificate but um, you can always ask okay their sex US citizen date of birth for your mother now if you've been married you have to put your spouse's information okay your current or most recent spouse when you were married um, if they were a citizen if you are a widow or if you've been divorced okay I have not been married so I skipped on by Number 12 is additional contact info. I only have a cell which was included at the top, so I skipped it. Okay. Occupation, I'm going to put Superwoman because I believe I am. Employer, it's going to be Employer 1 or whoever you work for. Okay. Put in your height. I'm glad they don't ask for weight. <laughs> Hair color is brown. Eye color is hazel. And you're going to put in when you're traveling. Okay. 
And then the fun part for me is which country are you traveling to? And I'm going to put the entire world. Okay, so you need to be serious. In my case, I'm going to Jamaica. Okay, permanent address. If it's um, if you provided a PO box at the beginning of the application, you want to put the permanent address here. Um, I provided both, so that doesn't apply to me. And the address that I included at the beginning of the application is the same as my permanent address, so I'm not putting anything in box. 19. You want an emergency contact in case something happens. You're going to put their address here. Um, city, state, zip, phone number. This is mine, so you won't get phone calls. <laughs> Relationship. Fiance. Have you ever applied for a passport book or card before? Yes. Okay. So it says if you, if yes, complete the remaining items in 21. So name is printed. My most recent passport is Brandy Nicole Como. Here is my book number. That's super simple. Just open up the passport book and you will see it there. It will have the issue number and date. I'm sorry, the passport book number and issue date for you. Um, status of your most recent passport book. I'm submitting it with the application, but if it was stolen or lost or if you're just keeping it because it's expired, you can... Um, mark that as an option. If you've had a card before, you fill that out. Okay, and that's it. Super simple, user friendly. Okay, to save this filled in document, you're going to hit the save and download PDF button. Okay, the PDF is going to pull up uh, on the menu down at the bottom. Hit the up arrow, hit open, hit the print button again, save it as a PDF. And then you're just going to name it. In this case, I did filled out DS11 passport and my name. Okay. You save it however you want, wherever you want, as long as you know what it is. Okay. You're then going to print it out and bring it with you to the appointment. Okay. Now, where do you go to bring an application? There are different places. Okay. So, um, post office passport appointment close enough. I think Google will know what that means. Again, remember you want a reputable site, so you don't want to see any ads. Um, the, US passport, the U.S. Postal Service website is going to be reputable, obviously. Okay, Passports pull up, schedule an appointment, and then you're going to tell them what type of service you need. So in my case, I need a new passport with photo services. They're, of course, going to be a fee, 15 bucks. Okay. Uh, I recommend using their service. They know what they're doing. It's super hard to take one yourself, and I don't know if drugstores that offer the service know exactly what's going to happen, um, if it's going to be accepted or not. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use them. I would just recommend using the post office. Okay. Adult, how many? So in my case, I had one. Ooh. Minors, none. And then you can search by location. Once you put in the location, it's going to pull up the closest, in this case, 20 miles from you. Select the location. And then it's going to ask you, when do you want to go? And then you're going to select a time. So let's just look at tomorrow. Okay. And these are your dates available. I'm sorry, times available. Contact information. Select send me an update via text message and then of course you have to agree to the terms and conditions okay now another big thing is how much does it cost so let's go back to the official state.gov travel.state.gov website and this is where you apply in person and how to apply information is found okay and I'm pretty sure you're going to find something that says calculate fees Okay, so adults, 16 and older, DS-11, which is what I filled out, is $110, okay, plus an, uh, an acceptance fee of $35, okay. Then you have the cost of the book, oh wait, then you have the cost to expedite it, okay, and then the cost to, um, for the photo services at the passport office, at the, the post office. So I paid 220 Okay, um, you may pay a little different. It just depends on what you're doing, but this is where you find your fees. Okay, 
you need to pay with a check or you need to pay with a money order. I don't believe they accept cash. If you have cash, you can always buy money order at the um, <clears throat> um, at the post office. Okay. It even tells you processing time. So routine is 10 to 12 weeks, which is not good for me <laughs> because I'm traveling in two months. Expedited is four to six weeks. It does tell you if you select expedited, we recommend you send your application using priority mail. That way they know um, that that way the mail gets it gets sent as quickly as possible. OK, and that's pretty much it. Filling it out, saving it, scheduling an appointment, looking at the fees and make sure you um, you bring an original birth certificate, driver's license, copies of both. Um, bring your old passport if you have it. A copy of that just for your records and then I even brought a social security card with me I didn't need it but I had it just in case okay because remember they're trying to um, prove your identity and the more you have to prove that the better okay all right guys y'all have a good day